In Tunisia, there is still a patriarchal mentality, especially in certain positions linked to power. Suad Abderrahim is the mayor of Tunis, and the first woman to become mayor of a capital city in the Arab world. This has caused a small sensation. There are many issues to tackle in Tunis. For example, constant traffic jams and problems with waste collection. It's not going to be easy for the new mayor, but she's determined to prove that she can rise to the challenge. Suad Abderrahim is visiting a construction site in Tunis's old city. She's come to make sure everything is going to plan. The goal is to give this part of Bab Sueka a makeover and attempt to alleviate the traffic jams. The mayor has very clear ideas. We said that we would create a sidewalk in the middle, then lamps. That's what I remember. Once the work is over, the hope is that there will be less traffic congestion. But traffic is not the only problem. I wanted to expand the surface but keep the old lamps. We can't exchange all of them. But according to the plan, they have to be exchanged. There are simply too many cars in Tunis, and not only in the old town. The mayor hopes that these reconstruction measures will relieve at least some of the congestion. Suad Abdurrahim, who is 54, is married with two children. She studied pharmacy. Now she has to focus on building sites and traffic flows, but she's a politician. It's her job to delve into new subjects quickly. She likes leaving the office and meeting the inhabitants of Tunis. We stay in contact through this kind of visit. We can see directly how a project is developing. There's communication with people. Our capital is the inhabitants, the Tunisian people. We're speaking to them, trying to solve their problems. That's our duty. It's not a favor that we're doing them. It's nice to walk through the city to see Bab Sueka. But this is not just a relaxing walk. She's meeting locals, talking about their problems. On the next corner, a discussion breaks out with sanitation workers. We don't have equipment, material or machines. Our colleague here knows it too. And we don't have enough garbage trucks and there isn't enough staff. I could employ 100 people straight away, but I'm not allowed to. I need permission. You know that the wages have tripled since the revolution. There isn't any money. We need projects that generate money, and then we can employ more people and create better working conditions. But we have so few rights. You have trade unions that defend your rights. We sit down with them every day, with all the unions. We met the trade unions and they got everything that they wanted. Waste management is also a major problem in Tunis. The garbage just piles up and is not always collected, left to fester. Suad Abderrahim continues her rounds with a visit to a garbage collection point. She says that the city doesn't have enough money or employees to set up a more efficient waste collection service at the moment. And she knows that locals are at the end of their tether. Many are angry, but they say there has been some improvement. They say that some places have become cleaner, 
while others have become dirtier. The lack of staff and the logistics means that we can't serve every street in Tunis. So what's the solution? She would like to introduce more recycling and work with private investors. But before this is possible, the laws have to be amended, and this could take some time. A bit further on, some locals complained to her about electricity. There was a power cut recently. She promises that she'll deal with the issue. The flawed infrastructure is the biggest challenge for Tunis and the mayor. Another traffic jam. Tunis Town Hall is located away from the hustle and bustle of the old town. Over the past 150 years, the mayor has always been nominated. Suad Abdurrahim is the first person to be elected to the position. And the first woman mayor ever. Even though we have relatively progressive laws and equal rights are anchored in law, equal opportunities for men and women still don't exist. There is still a patriarchal mentality, especially in certain positions linked to power, as if men had a lease on power, as if they had a lease on public administration. Abdirahim is the first person in Tunis to be called Shaker, the female equivalent of Sheikh, an honorific title in Arabic. But the new mayor, who ran on a ticket for the conservative Muslim Inahda party, has been the target of criticism from the very beginning. Some say she is being instrumentalized by the Islamist party. Others have openly expressed their doubts that a woman can do the job. Yet others have criticized the fact that she is an outsider, not from one of the elite families of Tunis, who in the past filled the role. We have breached some taboos. We've broken with traditions that had become law. When I won the election, people claimed false things about me. What they said reflects profoundly the psyche of these critics. Women's rights activist Leila Shebi is glad that there is a woman in Tunis Town Hall. However, she says that the Inahda party is actually against equal rights for men and women. She says they're only trying to give themselves a more modern image with Abdurrahim. Furthermore, she says that she has yet to form an opinion because she has not seen anything concrete yet. We want to see her do something for Tunis. The city is the face of the country. But it's in a terrible state from all points of view. Cleanliness, the environment, there are many problems. We don't even want her to campaign more for women's rights. We don't want to burden her. First, we'll see what she does in office, which is why she was elected, and then we'll hold her to account on equal opportunities. So far, she hasn't done a thing. But here on Avenue Habib Bourguiba in the middle of the city, opinion about the Sheikha is largely positive even though nobody can say whether the situation has really improved since her election. We're proud that there is a female mayor. A sheikha, as people are saying. That makes me proud. From what I understand in the news, there hasn't been anything negative about her. She's just doing her job like anyone else, regardless of whether they're a man or woman. She hasn't been in power for long. She's now entering the battle, the big war. Tunisia is fragile. The situation is very critical. Yet another meeting. Here she is with various mayors from other Tunisian towns. Most of them are men, of course. But there are a few female faces. 
20% of mayors in Tunisia are now women since the last elections in May. The Sheikha thinks this is a sign of victory for Tunisian women. What counts is performance, whether someone is a man or woman. But at the moment, I'm giving a lot of support to female mayors so that they can achieve success in office. Women in Tunisia have more rights than those in other parts of the Arab world. After the 2011 revolution, more laws were introduced to promote equal opportunities. Yet there is still plenty to be done. At the moment, there is a huge debate about inheritance laws and ensuring that men and women are equal. After work, the mayor and her staff go for another walk on the square. Not far away is the prime minister's official residence. Abdirahim has been in politics since 2011. She was originally planning to stand in next year's parliamentary elections, but instead she ran for mayor and won. There's speculation that she could become Tunisia's first female president. It's too early to say. I'm not even thinking about that at the moment. I've got a lot of responsibility for the next five years. Hopefully, we'll be able to implement projects that are appropriate for the capital and for the woman going down in history as the capital's first female mayor. So, for Suad Abderrahim, there's a lot at stake. Now she has to prove herself as mayor. Whether she's done her job well, the citizens will vote on this in five years' time.